You're listening to the Faith Breathe Hope podcast, episode number 181. Today, I speak with wife, mom, and children's author Irene Murphy on a miraculous healing podcast where we gain inspiration and motivation from others who share their touching stories of renewing hope and discovering purpose in any circumstance. I'm your host, Christina Reisinger, and today we will be encouraged by another tremendously inspirational topic that will embolden you to release fear, begin taking small steps forward, and move into your God-given purpose to live and serve in this life. Join me for today's story. Hello, Irene. I'm so grateful to have you on Faith Breathe Tope. How are you doing today? I'm great. How are you, Christine? It's great to be here. I, I'm good. Thank you so much for asking. Um, so the first thing in all of my shows that I have, or at least in the, the last year or so, I've had everyone do is to share something with the audience about themselves that maybe not even everybody in their own circle knows. Well, if I had to share one thing about me that not everybody knows and that surprises the heck out of everybody is I am the most shy person you could ever think of. I am an extreme introvert and lately just since writing my book and everything I have become this extrovert where I'm actually speaking to people and actually being able to go on a podcast and and speak freely and I'm having the time of my life and I'm thinking wow I kind of like this <laughs> <laughs> that's wonderful so it's a win-win situation with the book and the speaking huh <laughs> um so today we are going to talk about miraculous healing so the first thing I would love for you to do is share a little bit about your story and then uh, we'll see how everything plays out and answer some questions for the audience well, I was miraculously healed and I, um, in what I, what the topic was for me was, was it miraculous healing or was it God's delight in us? And I'd have to say it was a little bit of both when it comes to miracles, our faith or God's delight. The magnificent artist um, was inspired to me from a poem I had written a year after I was healed. I was inspired by the Holy Spirit of how he created everything and just how much he delights in all, not just some, but all of his creation. He created all with purpose and a special design unique to each individual and creature. The poem explained my journey to healing, my husband's journey, and our journey when we both cried out to our creator when we were both so broken and how he was so delighted to grant us this freedom in him. We just needed to stay connected to our life story, life, life source. So a little background, as a little girl, I loved Sunday school and my cousins and I would love to sing about Jesus and how much he loved us as loud as we could at the park close to their house. We'd sing our little hearts out. We delighted in Jesus just as much as we learned he delighted in us. We'd sing in the car on outings. We discuss, we discuss that we would do anything for Jesus. We would endure hardships for him, absolutely everything. We were smitten. And after church on Sundays, we would gather at my grandparents' home, with my mother, aunts, uncles, my cousins, and my siblings. And we just enjoy playing and hanging out and eating Dutch soup and buns. My mother was head of the Sunday school Christmas play every year. And this was always a highlight. Who would get to play what? However, due to traumatic experiences in my life, like what can happen to so many, my zeal was lost as I was growing up. I would still hear sermons and go to Sunday school, but didn't feel his love was for me. Life, like my story, the magnificent artist, I was believing that I wasn't any good. Nobody loved me. 
and I had absolutely no talent. Why bother? I was nothing. I began living life on both sides of the fence, not really fitting in either side. Like, how can one live life like this? I gave it my best shot for many years, and the inner turmoil was always there. I met my husband at 18, and it was love at first sight. So after a whirlwind romance, there was no time to lose, and we got married a year later. We were both so young, and we continued our journey on both sides of the fence. My husband, being a musician construction worker with a dream to make it big in music, in the music industry, would go in pursuit of his dreams for long periods of time as the 80s was in a recession and jobs for him in construction were not steady. Money was real tight. After the birth of our third baby, I suffered from postpartum psychosis, where all that inner turmoil came out like a volcano. I had lost touch with reality and was in the hospital for three weeks but still was suffering from the effects for months. I was also put on the wrong drugs, suffering from the side effects, and still couldn't care for my children, my husband, or my household. My brain was not functioning, and I was still in a pit of despair. And since the effects of the drugs also affected my motor movements, it made it impossible to function. My husband cried out and he felt the Lord's presence one lonely night that everything would be all right in time. But in the meantime, our life was a train track, train wreck. This was actually happening to me, someone who had been able to make it appear like I had it all together. The perfect wife, perfect mother, perfect preschool teacher, perfect daughter. Four months in, I just wanted to die. I was taken off these drugs, but the effects were still there and the doctors worried the effects of the wrong medication were going to be permanent. I was put on a different medication. However, I knew Jesus was gonna heal me. Frantically during this time, I would phone everyone I could think of every day to pray for me, but to no avail. I wanted the healing on my own terms, privately in the comfort of my own home. As this was so humiliating, how could this be happening to me? After five months of this deep pit of despair, I finally cried out in anguish to the Lord. I also called my pastor's wife that day and the Lord confirmed to her that yes, in fact, I would be healed, but it would be in the church at a prayer meeting where there'd be other people around. I hadn't been to church because, yeah, the way I was, would I be interested? I had to think for a moment after, you know, giving up all these appearances. So, well, I had nothing to lose. So I swallowed my pride and said, yes, two days away. But I knew that childlike faith I had as a child stuck with me. My heavenly father would not forsake me. He never turned his back on me. He heard my cry. That night finally came and my dear friend drove me as my body didn't allow me to drive. I shook profusely like I had Parkinson's. I had a stone-like face where I couldn't smile. It was bizarre. I was in rough shape. Finally, we were there, and some dear women gathered around me and laid hands on me and prayed. I felt as if the Holy Spirit was just enveloping me in his love, and I knew I was being healed. It wasn't immediate, like right then and there. I came home, pondered all night at the night's events, and when I got up in the morning, I smiled for the first time in five months and laughed with my husband. I actually stopped shaking, cooked breakfast for my two older children, and I picked my baby up. What a feeling that was, my precious baby, my precious family. 
I still had to take the antidepressants, but I was healed to the point that I could deal with the trauma I experienced when I was younger and the emotions that I suppressed. But I could take care of my family finally. And then we lived happily ever after. (laughs) Oh, I wish that were true. (laughs) Anyway, just to lighten the mood. (laughs) Thank you, Irene. So I want you to speak to the audience right now um, in a vulnerable way and say, hey, what is miraculous healing to you? What does it look like? Somebody who doesn't even understand what that could even possibly mean. Maybe they've never seen it. Maybe they've never really even heard of it. I know that you just read to us what happened uh, to you or for you. Um, But if somebody's sitting out there and they say, you know what, I'm going through something right now that I can barely handle. I can, I can't even think about looking to tomorrow. Um, And how would they say, okay, I'm going to go from this place to I'm going to believe in a miraculous healing. What, what what does that look like? What does that look like? Well, I know for me, it was, I'm here. Mm -hmm. That was, that was the Lord. I'm here. I'm going to guide you every step of the way. And I learned to be thankful for the small things, for a smile, for, for being able to stop shaking, um, just the, 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 the little things and just being able to hold, hold my baby for the first time in five months, I couldn't hold her. I mean, I was a preschool teacher. My, my career is, was children. I, I loved taking care, care of children and being a mother was my ultimate dream. And that was just stripped away from me. Everything was stripped away from me. And Jesus, he gave, gave me steps Mm -hmm. towards where, where if it was all at once, I would have, wouldn't have had to deal with the pain that was inside of me. So I was able to deal with the pain, like an onion peeling off layers and layers and layers towards total freedom and I don't and and that's a lifelong process I feel my healing was more is more of a journey I was healed to the point where I could function but I still needed to deal with those the inner turmoil yeah so oh go ahead go ahead yeah so that would be my advice to somebody is is sometimes the healing is is just being able to function and being able to deal with the everyday crisis. I had to deal with just everyday life, being able to cook breakfast and being thankful for the small things. Mm-hmm. Yes. So what I'm hearing there, and I do want to touch on a couple of these things, but if I were to tell somebody um, what you you said, your suggestion for being able to uh, approach the belief that there is a miraculous healing for them, there might be three steps. And we can look at that as number one, recognizing that God is always there, recognizing that he's here. And we can do that by uh, maybe affirmations, being able to uh, quote scripture back to God, being able to repeat scripture, um, believe it for ourselves. Sometimes we say, oh, well, that scripture, it's, it's in the Bible, but, you know, maybe it's not for me. I've seen it with other people, uh, but I'm not sure God really wants that for me. And I believe earlier you had mentioned, hey, you didn't see that that love that God had for you or in your childhood. And so I think so many people uh, are at that place where they say, okay, I believe in God. I believe that God is good. I know he's good because I see his goodness in other situations for other people, but maybe that's just not for me. So it's that belief that his goodness is for everyone. It's for you. It's for me. It's for all the audience. Uh, And you can do that maybe by uh, affirming through scripture. Um, The second thing that I got out of what you're saying is being thankful for the little things. And I love this because 
And there's so many things that we can take for granted every single day. You know, um, I remember going through uh, my own grief coaching before I became a, a grief coach and she had me look around and she said, sit in the, in the room and look around and see if you can name something that you're, you're grateful for. And at that point, I was, you know, full on tears, having no idea what could possibly be uh, anything I could be grateful for. And I saw my coffee pot and I said, I'm grateful for my coffee pot. And I use this quite a bit with um, people when I talk to them, but, you know, and then that built, right? So you said for the little things, it's not just one little thing. I assuming, I'm assuming that, you know, once you've noticed one, you, you see that they start to build up upon each other, correct? Is that, is that what you notice? Yes, exactly. I mean, just going out for a walk and seeing a bird and then realizing that's a gift to you from the Lord, you know, like a, a bird said, hello, you know, I mean, that's what I love about working with children is seeing, seeing the world through a child's mm -hmm. eyes. And mm -hmm. that's what's so special about children. And that's what I love about them. And that's what I love about working with them. And and just bringing that awe and wonder to them. It, it's just so wonderful. And I lost it. And mm -hmm. when I was healed, it was like the Lord says, hey, I delight in you just as much as you delight in those kids. And you are unique and you are special. And that is how I received my joy. I would say the healing was I got my joy back that I had as a child when I was that Sunday school kid with my cousin swinging as high as I could in that park across the street from my Auntie Jerry's house. And we were just singing our, our, our little hearts out. And then we would discuss how we would go to jail for Jesus. You know, hey, here we are, prisoners. <laughs> we would do anything and it was just so it, it was an exciting time and we got it back and I got it back and I remember that first day looking at my husband and we just we I, I just said I'm smiling I'm sighing and we just laughed and the joy in our house I'll never forget it and you know my 10 month old baby because I had the postpartum when she was five months, we sat, you know, I sat her on the counter and she giggled and cooed and sat and we made chocolate chip cookies for my kids when they came home. And that was the day that, that was healing. I would say the healing was I received the joy, but I also received a physical healing where I stopped the shaking and that's, that's amazing. You know, and I love the fact that you say it's the joy. I know where grief is, is around. Um, it's very difficult to find yourself smiling again. And so being able to experience that is uh, definitely fulfillment of uh, his healing. I wanted to, to go back to the third thing that I caught from you, which was, um, and I don't know how you would say this and correct me if I'm wrong, but these are just the things that I gathered from what you were saying. So the first one was being able to know that God is always there and he's always good. The second one was to uh, be grateful and, and thankful for the little things. And then the third one was to actively uh, work on relationships. You talked about being able to pick up your, your baby and being able to play with your baby and um, see the joy that came out of all of the little children that you were working with, uh, because we can notice not only the things that we're grateful for, but when you are working with other people, you can see the goodness that's coming out of them, the things that they're thankful for. So that I thought that the idea that you talked about the children, um, was a good example because you can see the delight in their eyes that came through. Uh, when they were thankful for things, because they get excited about, you know, the little things all the time. Um, so then you also talked about peeling the layers like an onion. And I think that's kind of an interesting thing because um, you talk about this miraculous healing. So when I know when I think of miraculous, I think of something that's like quick, you know, something that I wasn't expecting, something that came 
uh, to me swiftly. Um, <clears throat> but you also added that it's a journey. And I'm so glad that you said that because I know with grief, it's a journey. It's different for everybody. Um, the, the way that people process things, the way that people cope with things, they move through different situations. It's all different. And it's so important that you have reminded the audience that even though it is a miraculous healing, the miraculous part, I believe maybe, and again, correct me if I'm wrong, comes from the fact that the Holy Spirit was able to wrap his arms around you and give you that joy that you had not had previously, uh, or you did when you were a child, but he brought it back to you. Um, but even so, there's still things that you have to process throughout time. There's still going to be things that come up that maybe you thought that you had already moved past. And then you're like, oh, maybe I have to process this a little bit. Can you talk about that and how time, you know, brings us those layers of the onion to unpeel? Yeah, well, I think dealing with trauma, if anybody's experienced trauma in their life as a youngster, um, to deal with it all at once would be devastating to every indiv individual. So you need to really through prayer and time, it takes prayer and time and patience to deal with things you know, little I mean, God is a gent. Jesus is a gentleman, uh, you know, the, that that guides you step by step by step. Like, let's deal with this. And I see, oh, you know, like maybe we could deal with a little bit of, um, you know, dealing with things. Like I I suppressed all my emotions, and you know, being a girl, I would just being a, a youngster, I would just, oh, well, I'll have to forgive those people, because that's what a Christian does. Mm -hmm. And I'll just have to carry on, you know, come from um, a strong European family where you don't, you know, hang your dirty laundry out on the on the line. So you just deal with it and carry on be strong. And well, you know, that's not the way Jesus wants us to live. He wants us to be free. And mm -hmm. you do have to deal with things slowly. And it takes time. And it takes a lifetime sometimes. Right? We have just to continually like, seek his face, right? Exactly. And just like being an introvert to an extrovert, it's like, you know, what was that introversion all about? Was it just because I didn't feel the confidence in myself because mm -hmm. I was afraid to use my voice? And actually, I would say it took a long time for me to actually be able to use my voice. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, so becoming totally free can sometimes take a life lifelong adventure. But yeah, so the miraculous healing was I got the joy instantaneously mm -hmm. and I felt the love and the physical healing of stopping the shaking of the effects of the of the drugs that I was put on wrongly. But the the rest of it was a real journey. I like that. I like that a lot. So uh, when the audience is out there and they're listening to you and, and they're able to resonate with what you're saying, but they're not in the place that you're at yet. And they say, you know what? I want to believe this. I want hope. Uh, I want to be healed. Do you have any uh, encouragement that you would give them or, or do you have any scripture that you want to share with them at this point? Um, you know, so that they can say, you know what? This is doable. God's got me. And I'm going to move forward through this. It's in Psalms. I am fearfully and I'm wonderfully made. And also he knows. He hems me in. I don't know which scripture that is. I don't know where it's address is. But yeah. And yeah. Okay. No worries. We'll find it. Conditionally, and yeah, there is one. Let me. Um, it's in Psalms, Psalms thirty-two. Let me look. I'm sorry. 
I don't mm -hmm. have it down. So, but, oh, well, actually, why don't we just do this? The one that I did have writing down, you know, uh, get, you know, be with other like-minded people. Um, and that would be with um, Hebrews 10, 24 and 25. It states, let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing. Like I was, I had such shame. Like how could anybody see me, see me like this? And then that's how we encourage each other. That's how we love each other. And you know, there's nothing to be ashamed of. Everybody goes through something. And that's what love is. And I think that would be the best. Yeah. Absolutely. And one another. Yes. When we love one another, we understand that we have compassion for one another. And we work as a community to help one another get through things. Um, yeah. Just to let the audience know, the scripture that you were referring to before is in Psalm 139. Um, 139 14 is the scripture about being fearfully and wonderfully made. And uh, you hand me in behind and before you have laid your hand upon me. That is Psalm 139 5. So you're in the, the same area and we'll put those scriptures uh, in the show notes as well. If you guys want to get out your Bibles and study all the things. So Irene, would you uh, please tell the audience where they can go to find you? You can go to IreneMurphy.com and that would be the best place because I am one of the older generation and not very... <laughs> tech savvy so i really don't have my instagram <laughs> very well or my anything else but my uh website was professionally done <laughs> websites are good i mean i i'm not tech savvy either so you know no shame here at all i can edit but that's about it <laughs> so um Irene, it was wonderful speaking with you. I thank you so much for being vulnerable, coming on Faith Breathe Tope and sharing a little bit about your story and giving some encouragement to the audience uh, when they are going through some troubles and looking to the Lord for this miraculous healing. So I really appreciate you. Well, thank you so much for having me. And for all of you out there, continue to be blessed and bless others. And we'll see you next time. And I want to thank you for joining us on Faith Breathe Hope, where you gain inspiration and motivation to renew hope and discover purpose in any circumstance. Please like and share this podcast and give us a review on iTunes. Be blessed.